everyone. Uh, thanks for coming out this evening uh, to listen to this. Uh, I'm Jingmen, a um, web developer, and I thought I'd share about this experience I had while working with sulfuric acid. Uh. So, uh, it's, it's very exciting because uh, this, this is a story. Uh, I went to buy some chips, and normally uh, I'll ask you uh, when you want to buy like integrated circuits, right? You all will go to a DigiKey or Mouser, right? Am I right to say that? Maybe not E14. Maybe not E14, uh, Singapore maybe E14. Uh. So uh, these are the usual trusted places. Uh. But then um, I had to buy this rather exotic chip. Uh. This is actually from last year's, MD last, last year's MDP. Uh. I was just playing with the chips. Uh. And I couldn't find them anywhere except Taobao. So uh, a bit dodgy. Uh. But I had no other choice, so I went to buy it off. And then uh, one month later it arrived. And the left side is the original one, the right side is the Taobao edition. So if you all look at it, right, can you all spot differences in it? Number. Yeah, it's quite subtle. Yes, the number, especially number four, you can see it's kind of built up on the right one. And uh, the letter spacing, it's a little bit off for this one. And lastly, right, the registration dot, which will indicate a pin one, right, it's quite fat on the Taobao one and thinner on the original one. So when I saw that, I was like, oh yeah, I think I got corn, uh, maybe a fake. <laughs> Because the Chinese are really good at this technique where they repackage a chip and then they mark it over again. And this is usually what it looks like, a very subtle change in packaging. So I didn't need to be good like uh, the real deal because what I, what I intended to do right, was uh, a glitching attack. I've never tried it, I was quite excited to try it. But then uh, it had to be the real thing, uh, it had to be the same thing. So the only way I could prove it was the real thing was to actually decap it. And decapping right, is the process where you use uh, any technique that you prefer. Like, it can be mechanical, uh, lasers or acids to remove the outer epoxy layer of a chip so as to expose the silicon dye inside. So uh, the silicon dye is very hard to fix because I mean that's the heart of the chip. And uh, if you can see the chip properly, right, and you compare them visually, you can tell that whether it's a real one or a fake one, or sometimes there's no chip inside at all, it's just epoxy. Yeah. And uh, the left side one is the original one. The right side is the top of one. And I'm surprised uh, because actually when I compare them, when I overlay them, right, they're actually the real, real new. So, I, I was lucky on this one, but can't be lucky all the time. So, um, to do this, right, uh, there are many ways, like I said. Sulfuric acid is actually surprisingly easy, uh, if you don't hurt yourself. Uh, okay, uh, I, was, I was quite hesitant at first, because uh, when I went to read about acids in Singapore, you can't really get acids. Uh, I think the background is because, like, in the past, gangsters, they like to throw acid on a motorbike or something like that. Uh, so, there are quite a lot of regulations regarding this. But then I found out, I went to Changi right, and I was like, hey, this hardware store will sell this uh, drink cleaner and suffering acid. It doesn't say how much percentage and it comes with inhibitors, uh, but it works and we're very happy. Uh, $14, one litre, very good. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, online literature right, says that uh, suffering acid is actually like second best compared to red fuming nitric acid. And I'm quite happy because I don't want to deal with red fuming nitric acid. Uh, just thinking about it sounds a bit scary, really. Fuming nitric acid. Yeah. And, um, it's good, uh, that's why I heard it's good. I tried it, I think it's pretty good too, I endorse it. Uh. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I mean, uh, in all seriousness, right, normally people say don't do it at home, uh, I think it's irresponsible. So you do it at home, but carefully. And I want to advise you, if you want to try this, right, make sure you understand how to work with acids, how to work with sulfuric acid. That means read the uh, material safety data sheet. Uh, have plans for contingencies. That means if something happens, you must know what to do. Uh. I think it's really fine, it's just that you have to make sure that you take care of yourself, respect the acid. And then, uh, apart from doing all that, right, make sure uh, these are the points that I found quite important, so I just steal them. Uh, clear your work area, you don't want your cat or dog to walk in. Um, <laughs> let someone know before you work, because it actually emits fumes and you don't want to knock out uh, or something like that. Um, Sulfuric acid works, uh, it's a bit violent when you add water to it or the other way around. So, uh, there's this uh, phrase that people always repeat and I should repeat it too. Um, add acid to water, not water to acid. Uh, just remember that. Okay. Uh, and sulfuric acid is different when you heat it up, and that's the gist of today's talk. Uh, we call use heated sulfuric acid. So uh, when you're working with it, right, when you're going to dispose of it, okay, make sure it's cool because when it's warm, you have a bit of a problem and it's going to be very violent. Yeah, let it cool down first. Okay, so required hardware. Um, actually, I'm on a shoestring budget, uh, I'm quite a peasant, so I buy most of my stuff from Daiso. Gloves from Daiso, uh, safety glasses from Daiso. Baking soda, $1, $1. And um, the pots from Daiso as well. The, Glass jar, it's not from Daiso, it's from China, so it just, yeah, you have to figure out, uh, steal it from somewhere, if you work somewhere that has this kind of thing, borrow, uh, okay? Uh, get your IC to decap, uh, try to not use a big IC, because it's going to take a while, uh, it might not decap evenly as well, uh, the best is here, like, uh, QFN, uh, small outline packages, small packages are good, use suffering acid, if you know what you're getting, even better, I didn't know what I was getting, I just try, uh, but I can tell you the one I use works, uh. Uh, online it says 96% and onwards, 
I think around 96 is the highest you can go for sulfuric acid before it starts interacting with water in the air. Uh, heat resistant glass, we make sure it's photosilicate. silicate, if not, uh, just stand very far away from it when you're working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, sodium bicarbonate, I didn't really have to use it, but uh, it's good to clean up the work area with it if you need to, because uh, it's, it's an everyday thing, la, like everyday material, and you can just scatter it, wash it, and you're pretty sure it's clean, really. Uh, heat source, I use a stove. Uh, hot plate better, but no, no choice, use stove. Uh, protective equipment, really go and get it, at least uh, specs and gloves. Really, really get it. If you can afford a lab coat that is acid resistant, even better, but I can't, so I leave with this too. Alright, so on the process, three steps. Uh, apart from your safety preparation, three steps. Okay, make sure you are all decked out and ready to do the work. Uh, clean and dry your glass container because if you have organic materials in it, it's going to fizzle and make a mess and hurt you. Uh, add the IC you decap. My, my, the way I prefer to do it is to add the ICs first, then add the acid into it because you can then see how much acid, you just need a thin layer to cover the acid, uh, cover the IC completely. And then yeah, that, put it on the heat, heat source. At this point of time, nothing should happen. Uh, that nothing should be reacting yet. Uh, it only works when it's heated, which is quite convenient. So the next thing you want to do is to heat it up until it forms quite fumes. And it will be a little bit blotchy where the IC is. Uh, this is when it's uh, at its working temperature, which is about 150 degrees. Uh. It also, the, the fumes are a bit noxious, so stay away from it, or if you have a fan, blow it away. And when it's in this state, you can take it for about 2 to 10 minutes, depending on the size of, of your package. Uh, afterwards, right, you cool down and check so that uh, you know whether it's decap or not. Uh. Uh, let it cool down first, you swirl it around, and then you can see if the package is still on there, you put it back onto the stove and let, let it do its work again. Uh, if it's working, you should see like, uh, it looks a bit different. Uh. You can see like copper, like copperish material on it. And that's when you know it's successful. So when you're done with it, right, uh, you decant the solution, make sure you don't pour out the IC, because uh, that happened once I poured away the thing I was uh, removing, uh, quite sad. Yeah. Um, just pour it into cool water, remember it has to be cool, everything has to be cool when you're working with sulfuric acid. Uh, and then when you're done, I can dispose of it. It's drain cleaner, so I guess it belongs in the drain, so it's okay. <laughs> okay. And then, uh, if, you have a if you have a chance to do so, right, uh, use acetone to uh, clean in ultrasound. Uh, that will give you a really clean finish. Uh, so, so far I've been talking, uh, I made a little G for about 30 seconds right, to show the process itself. So it looks like this 30 seconds -ish. The fire is actually on. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Fancy. Very good. China. Yeah, most of my stuff are from China. So, uh, this is the, uh, you know, like in brief how it's done. Uh, it's actually, like, you all can see, it's actually quite simple. As long as you don't hurt yourself. Really, really, I think it's possible. Like, you want to try it at home, it's okay. Okay, so right, uh, as with, if you want to decap something, right, the next logical thing you want to do is actually look at it. Uh. So imaging, I thought it was very logical, uh, it was a nice thing to add behind. So uh, I thought it was very, very, very quickly about this imaging process. Uh, I went to get a used microscope that was $80 at a surplus shop. And then, um, if you want to pick a microscope, right, get a metallurgical one. If you can't, then, like me, you can get a biological one. Uh. The key difference is that biological one, you will shine a light from below, uh, whereas metallurgical one, you shine from above and reflect off the dye. So the former is preferred. Uh. Then, um, Objective lens is the most important part. Uh, you don't really need the eyepiece. You're going to remove the eyepiece anyway when imaging it. So uh, the focus cannot be at infinity. If you're getting a good microscope, it might be at infinity, which is a problem. Uh, if you have a choice between an achromatic one, uh, get an achromatic one. Uh, on planarity, you can get a planar one, right? get, a plain, uh, get a plan one. If you can't, then you live like me. Uh, you'll be a bit distorted at the edges, but you have to live with it. Uh. The problem with that is when you want to stitch a dye image together, right, it gets a bit difficult because it's distorted at the edges. So. Uh, when you want to take images, it's very simple. If you have a camera that can expose the, the sensor off, right, you are golden. Uh, um, you find a way to attach it to your microscope uh, after you remove the objective lens. Then, right, uh, what happens right, when you do this, right, is it becomes a prime lens. It's a fixed focus adjustable lens. Uh, and then you can put your subject underneath, underneath it right, and get very decent images. So uh, to look at the images, uh, okay, this, this is just an example. I think it's more close to home. Now. This is an Arduino Nano. I think some of you might have seen it before. I removed the F mega 328 e This is the IC itself. This is the die on the platter. I actually have it with me. I can pass it around later to see the uh, exposed die. And this is the die image. So when you put it under a microscope, this is a rough idea of what you can see. It's, this is the bottom half of it. And um, some, there's one way you want to really check whether it's from FML, right? You can look around because usually they leave like their logo around. This is the FML logo. My microscope is not very good, uh, but. You can kind of, if you've seen the FML logo before, this is what the FML logo looks like in 
a bit of a blurry setup. Yeah. So right, the takeaway is um, it's actually very accessible. I'm very excited to share this because I think it's very accessible. I haven't really seen people in Singapore try this. Uh, you don't need to get extra licenses from like NEA or people like that or set up a company. I can just do it. It's affordable. I think fourteen dollars for later. I can be kept all the ICs in my life. And <laughs> yeah. And, as I would usually summarize this, uh, you can do this in Singapore, I think that's a very exciting part. And on the practical aspects of it, right, uh, it's good because let's say you're working on something mission critical like a face maker, right, and you're worried about supply chain problems like uh, counterfeits making, it, making their way into your supply chain, right? you can do decapping in-house to verify your dye so that you're very confident that what you have is the real deal. Do like, you know, one in 100 destructive testing and you know that uh, you'll be very confident of your products. And another thing I'm also very excited to say right, is that you can now buy with confidence from China because they actually have very good rates. Uh, they have a wide variety of products, very good rates. It's just very often you also run into unscrupulous people uh, that give you um, bad products. And uh, with this technique, right, you can actually be daring, try out if, it, if it's bad, you know, uh, if it's good, then yeah, it's a jackpot for you. Uh, and from a business, business perspective, it's very useful. And it's more than just that because sometimes, right, you know, end of life products, if you're like, interested in vintage chips, right, uh, a lot of them are fake. But with this technique, you can actually check whether it's a real deal. And lastly, uh, decapping is actually a precursor to a lot of other processes. Uh, there's one I've always looked at, but I don't dare to try it, which is uh, an invasive hardware attack because it seems very complicated. Uh, but uh, this is the precursor to it. And um, the first step is kind of done. Uh, like someone has done it and not injured himself. So I can tell you all, you can do it. You can do it. Yeah. So um, this link is called Silicon Prawn like, uh, by John McMaster. It's very useful. Uh, it's a wiki, it documents like uh, how to pick a microscope, how to do it, the different types of acids, what not to do. And then they also have this thing called an archive, which is really useful as well because um, they have a lot of user contributed chips. And inside uh, this archive, right, you can decap your chip and then compare with those in the archive to make sure that you're getting the right, right item. Uh. So that's it. Thanks for listening. Uh, if you have questions, I don't have a lot of time, uh, actually, sorry. So uh, if you have questions, uh, you can. <laughs> You're, you're, okay, send it. you're gonna be around, so we, they can find you after the. Yeah, yeah. You, or you can just send me a tweet. I'll be around. Just one question. I know sure. you don't have time. Yeah. <laughs> can you come back next month for the recap? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's possible because you can buy dyes, and I, uh, I think it's called a WCSP package. Uh, it comes in a dye format. You can wire it, wire bond it to your circuit itself. Yeah. So it's they sell the dye itself, and in China, uh, it's very popular, like for cheap toys, right? They put a dye on the board, and they wire bond, bond it to the PCB directly, and then they put a blob of epoxy on it, and that's, that's how they do it. Uh. So it's possible, but I'm not sure if I can do it. I blame Casio for that. That's how they've been making the watches for decades. Oh, really? Okay. Cool, cool. Awesome. So, thank you, thank you all. <laughs>